Hi Pisceans. This reading is for anyone who identifies as or feels themselves being drawn to a Pisces at this time. We are looking at the end of January. The Priestess to start you off. We're looking at the end of January 2019, of course, Pisces, and we will look back to see what the blood moon brought in for you at the start of aqua season. And we will we'll look forward to the very end of the month and the beginning of next to see how that uh, develops in the near future. And we're also going to look and see um, what you aren't seeing about um, each stage of experience, your past, present, and future. The hanged man is the energy that comes through to represent uh, the past, your time about a week ago, right around the, the blood moon, as I said. And the nine of coins in your near future. So it looks like by the end of this month, beginning of next, uh, Pisces, you will be uh, enjoying financial independence in some sense. Yeah. Yes. I hesitated to say that, but then I, I heard confirmation about it. Financial independence in some sense. Uh, um, for for some of you Pisces, it's uh, the beginning of financial independence, and for others, it's the heart of it. It's the the peak of financial independence. I wonder if you can see all three of these. There we go. So around the the blood moon, about I was again about a week ago. Uh, Pisces, you were feeling like yourselves, and yet at the same time you were feeling um, stalled, like you had to, um, like you had no choice but to wait on probably this financial independence that's developing in the near future. Um, the hanged man is talking about you feeling suspended in between two things. So perhaps you were suspended in between careers or living situations or people, um, ideas of, of who you wanted to be even. You also have the king of coins showing up. So currently you are, um, even though it may not be obvious to you, Pisces, currently you are mastering your own financial situation. And then the King of Cups shows up for you as well. Three of Coins on the bottom of the deck. So this financial independence and mastery of your finances is coming as a direct result of um, having walked away from something that um, was holding you back in a sense. There we go. The, the hanged man, your card, is someone who appears to be martyred, but um, in the, it's actually someone who's very much serene and at peace, even though they appear to be martyred, because it's their choice to sacrifice something. So you sacrifice someone, something, again, a place, a, um, a place of business, somewhere you were working or somewhere you were living or some situation you were in, and it could, could have been a relationship as well, but your sacrifice left you feeling for maybe this whole past week like you were, again, as I said, stuck still. Um, and I don't think it was uncomfortable. I think in that space, like I said, you were serene and at peace. And, and since the hangman is your card, also feeling very much like yourself, like you made a decision that was true to you to sacrifice someone, something, someplace. 
and what you weren't um, comprehending at the time, what, what wasn't registering with you on a conscious level at the time, and maybe you still haven't seen this clearly yet, is that in the process, you were not only um, leaving something behind that wasn't meant for you, wasn't serving you, um, that quote, I always say that um, learning to love the sound of your foot, footsteps walking away from something not meant for you. I always hear that quote with the, ace, the eight of cups. Uh, but also you were heading toward higher things, higher meaning healthier things, uh, pursuits um, that um, excite and elevate your very soul, uh, things that you were, you were heading toward higher things in the sense that you were seeking answers to questions that you had always sought or never asked. You were seeking in a more evolved um, and grown version of yourself. So you were feeling like you were still, but you were actually setting out on this journey toward, um, toward a, a higher state of being, an elevated consciousness. And really, truly, a state of being where your conscious and your subconscious were uh, in com more in communication with one another in a deeper or more often, more often or, or in a deeper way than you ever had been before since we have the high priestess in your current position. Uh, you're feeling like you can see beyond the veil to a certain extent. So for some of you, it's actually talking about your psychic abilities being heightened, um, your so so some of you you're doing work that you love to do and it is psychic work um light worker type of work something something like uh reading tarot cards some sort of energetic healing uh reiki healing um therapeutic work with with others but that is not what's unknown to you. If it's your psychic abilities developing, then you certainly are aware of it. You know it. And it has come directly from setting an intention, whether consciously or unconsciously, to, to seek that state. It has come from a period of, again, stillness and rest that others may have viewed as um, uncomfortable because you were suspended in between two things, but it wasn't uncomfortable. You were developing in that place. And if it's not psychic abilities, then it's your intuition developing. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, obviously those two things are very connected. Um, anytime, anytime that I feel my psychic abilities are heightened, it comes full circle around to me realizing that it's a direct result of me just learning and practicing trusting my own intuition uh, on a deeper level in a deeper way than I ever have before. And so these these senses, these feelings seem and sound louder, but it's it's it really is um coming from my trust in myself and my, and and in my intuition being deeper. And it may be that you, some of you, you know, are conscious of the fact that you can see beyond the veil in some sense, but you're not labeling it as, you know, my psychic abilities or my intuition are heightening. And that that's fine. You may be able to see beyond the veil in regards to a specific person, a specific situation, a specific job, relationship, etc. Again, all of the, the same categories could apply. Two kings. So much mastery that you aren't truly giving yourself credit for um, as a result of having chosen to sacrifice um, a way of being with someone or, or, or at some place in order to seek this higher, higher state of being, Pisces. And I, I sometimes now do read the Priestess card as a Pisces card. I know a lot of people don't, um, or at least a lot of the readers that I followed over the years haven't, but 
that came through a month or two ago and it hasn't left me. That's just going to be something that sticks with the priestess card for me now. So I see the hanged man and then the priestess and I see just two versions of you. You, I, you know, you're very much and have been since the blood moon in touch with who you are, what your truth is, who you want to be, what you want to be doing because you're heading toward or already engaging in work you love to do with the three of, of pentacles or coins, the three of earth showing up here for us on the bottom of the deck. That's advice for you moving forward though as well to continue to focus on and seek work that um, excites you because you love to do it, Pisces. Um, and, and, and that intuition, that heightened sense of intuition or psychic ability, uh, being able to see through and past people's masks, situations, uh, surface value or, or the, what the surface evaluation of a circumstance or, or, or situation would be is what is allowing you to master your earthly realm, your tangible physical resources, your financial world specifically, perhaps a lot of times with the coins, with the king of coins. And a lot of you, it's for your family, whether you have one now or are just hoping for one. Um, when I see the king of coins, yeah, for a lot of you, it is specifically um, for your family or, or work that you're doing also for your community, for the earth itself. And it's leaving you feeling... Um, Again, on a subconscious level, even if you're not in connection with it consciously, it's leaving you feeling um, healthy. And it's been, it's been in some sense because you've been willing to get your hands dirty, to do what needed to be done, to sacrifice, let go of, walk away from what needed to be let go of, and then get to work. I think it's possible, Pisces, because you've, again, chosen or are on a path to choosing and focusing on work you love to do. See, you've met, see, you've, <clears throat> you've mastered your financial world and, and gains and, and your, your physical resources on a mental and emotional level. That's why you maybe have it currently. That's why you maybe haven't even realized that those things, the, the, your, your money, your resources in your life are mastered. You've already won the game in your mind and in your heart. You know what emotions you want to live out loud in order to attract or um, meet the experiences and resources that you want because you'll be on, on the, the same frequency as them. Uh, you've already done that in, in your inner world and you maybe don't even realize it yet, but here in just a few days by the end of the month or within the next week, so perhaps the beginning of February, it's, it's manifesting physically as this sense of financial independence, this realization of financial independence. You, you will actually see it come to pass in, as I said, the beginning of financial independence, seeing a road, a path in front of you unfold that could lead to financial independence, etc. Again, I think very much because you have your sights set on work you love to do, Pisces. And that, in turn, as you as you realize that financial independence is beginning to, to, to take shape, you're beginning to see the rewards, to get to enjoy them, then your emotional world is also mastered with the King of Cups showing up for us as well. At this stage, you are um, able to observe your own emotions and the emotions of others around you and act accordingly in a very mature manner, showcase the fact that you have, um, not to show off, but, but, but interact with people with a high emotional IQ because you won't be distracted by trying to make ends meet or trying to find this work you love to do, trying to find your financial independence or, or, or um, master your financial world, however you want to say it. Beautiful. Beautiful reading, Pisces. Three major arcana for you as well. As you're not the first sign who's who's gotten that up top. No, two major arcanas to start the reading off. And then the nine of coins, two kings. 
I do see the Eight of Swords under here, which only makes me want to say that 88 may be particularly significant or perhaps lucky for you around this time. Um, Pisces, it, it might be something for you to look into. When I see eights, I see prosperity. And the only other message that makes me want to drop for you real quickly is don't... Do not hold yourself back from the work that you love to do or perhaps the necessary collaborations that may need to take place in order to encourage that work that you love to do, right? Um, because and, and it makes sense because the only thing at this point that can hold you back, Pisces, would be you. With, with a reading as, as gorgeous as this, you would be the only person, the only thing that could stand in your way. So this is beautiful, and I, I do hope it helped. I hope it offered you some insight, Pisces, uh, something that you didn't have when you came to the reading. If you're interested in a private reading, either that asks new questions or expands on what we have here, just scroll down to the description box below. All of the information and details can be found there. All of the links can be found there. Or you are more than welcome to email me at lunaticstarot at gmail.com. Happy to work with you that way as well. I love you, Pisces. I hope you make wise choices for yourself moving forward, and I will post another tarot fix for you very soon.